Hey everyone, it's Jim and I'm back in the garage again with my 790 Adventure. I just got this coolant. This is a pre-mixed coolant that is used in racing and other really high performance applications. And I'm curious about it. Curious enough that I reached out to Engine Ice and asked them to send me this. They obliged and here's what I want to know. I want to know if the hype is real, if this stuff really works. Other people have told me it does who race. People who I've talked to have even run it in their dirt bikes. Just about everything in between and they think it's great. So what I want to do is experiment a little bit. What I should find is the bike takes longer to go up to full temperature and that power in the bike stays more consistent. So what I'm going to do is use this opportunity as one to show you first how to change the coolant on a bike. So I'm going to heat it up, record the temperature of the engine when the fan comes on both using the dash and using my temperature gun here. And then I'm going to flush, well I'm going to drain the old coolant and I'm going to add a 50-50 mixture of white vinegar and distilled water. I'm going to run it again up to temperature until the fan kicks in, get it warm. Then I'm going to dump that and I'm going to run clear water in it just to flush out any remaining vinegar and then I'm going to add the engine ice and I'm going to record how long it takes to get up to temperature. We'll do a little comparison just in the garage and then of course I'll run this all summer and let you know how that pans out too. So if you never change the coolant on a bike here's your big chance to see how. I actually haven't done it myself either. I've done it on plenty of heavy equipment, cars, but never bikes. I don't know why. Never have needed to. So yeah, let's get to work. Basically the 11 minute and oh, 15 second mark. I'll have to check it after. Well, that was noisy. This is a completely stock bike too, I should add. Pretty warm. Now we know it's like just over 11 minutes from cold, never run all day, to the fan coming on at 162 degrees or something. So that's our baseline. Let's get the coolant out of this thing. First thing I did here was unbolt my overflow bottle and I pushed back the little clamps holding some of the tubes on. And I'm just going to hold on to my old coolant just for reasons that only I know. So this should hold 1.6 liters of coolant according to what I found in the owner's manual. Now I don't want to open this right now because the engine is hot and I might get more than I bargained for. But the next step will be to come down here and this right here is a drain plug on the water pump and this is where you drain your coolant it's the lowest point of the engine so let me get that sucker off there got myself some gloves got myself a funnel and my jug to catch it got myself a quarter inch drive ratchet with an eight millimeter socket on it and now coolant will probably go everywhere except down the funnel oh, 
look at that. It is working. It's kind of going in. Is a long drain plug. Whoop. So I didn't undo the cap, and that is why it's probably staying in there. If I... Oh, there we go. Now it's going everywhere. Holy cow. <laughs> All right, we're gonna need a bigger funnel because yes, it is in fact spraying out of there. That little funnel caught the drain plug nicely though. So now we'll go with this sucker. I don't know what you can see exactly, but here we go. So what I'm doing is just loosening the cap on the radiator and out comes the boiling hot coolant. I just gave it a little bit of a twist and it came rocketing out of there. This windshield washer fluid jug should be more than enough to hold it. It's almost four liters. And that is hot coolant, all right. Look at that. Oh, I don't know if you can see much of anything, but let me assure you, it is wonderful. Now, well, that's better. Now you can probably see pretty good. Look at that, I think it's almost done. Oh, all over my nice paint job on the Black Dog Cycle Works skid plate, which I'm also testing this year. If you haven't seen that video, take a look. I'm kind of proud of my paint job, even if not everybody likes it. I like it. That was up here. See this. So now the overflow bottle is free and clear as well. So I can just go hang out down there. Now I will reinsert this drain plug and uh, prepare our flush mixture of 50% white vinegar and 50% distilled water. Run it up to temperature again, and then we'll drain this again. Fill it with just water, run it a little bit, and then drain the water, and then it's engine ice time. When you're putting the drain plug back in, there is a torque spec, which I neglected to look up, but the basic idea here is don't get crazy. So I just run it in till it is flush, and then I go like maybe an eighth of a turn, and that's good vinegar. Jim, you're not using your wife's nice Pyrex Measuring cups, are you? Uh, no. Then go with no. All right. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty close to the top. Still going in when I... Oh. oh, yeah. Okay. Put this back on. Let's fire it up. Just check that. Yeah, that's not leaking. So we want to circulate this flushing agent really good. Let's drain the flushing agent. 
Ooh, look at that. Hot stuff on hot exhaust. That's what that funny noise is. Hey, Joe, how are you? Oh, tomorrow, tomorrow. Nice. You got to put the new coolant in first. Oh, yeah. So we're draining it now. Nice, huh? Oh, this is the good stuff. <laughs> well, right, right now this is just flushing agent, but <laughs> he didn't know I was filming. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I guess I should have. Yeah, there was some pressure there too. This is, of course, non-toxic vinegar and water. Not going to be a problem at all if it goes down the street. Let's get all this stuff out. Woo, baby. Good thing this isn't a Harley Ultra Classic, eh? Put in the distilled water. Nice and easy. We'll run it a little bit. One more drain. Undo the rad cap. Never open a rad cap with your face in front of it, just in case. This time we want it all out. Even more than last time. Ladies and gentlemen, now, finally, after all that, it's time to put in the engine ice. Childproof labels, eh? Okay. Somehow I imagined it smelling like blueberry because it's such a pretty blue. It doesn't. It smells like coolant. I'm going to add this really slow, as much as possible, to fill every nook and cranny. Squeeze the lower rad hose a little bit. And move it around, get rid of some air bubbles. That's what I wanted to avoid. Now I'm going to... I don't know how you're supposed to fill this overflow when it's on the bike. But I am going to put some in here even now. That is very, very, very full. May as well take this opportunity to get this clamp on. And I may as well do up these. As expected, I have a little bit left over. I have to get all the air bubbles out before I know that I've got the correct amount in the engine. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it for a little ride and I'll do the test in the morning and film that. I want it to be a fair comparison after all. Remember how I said I was going to go on a little ride just to make sure the coolant evened out and everything like that? Yeah, well, that little ride turned into like a 350-mile jaunt of adventure riding through mud and everything. 
So it's definitely settled out. We got all the air out of the system and I checked my level and I was just about bang on actually. Um, I added like maybe another 100 milliliters or so. So now it's judgment day. I'm going to fire it up, let it idle just like before, check the temperature for when the fan kicks in and how long. So I'll do, I've got my temperature gun, same one. The temperature, ambient temperature is the same as before. Everything is the same other than one thing. And that is that I put on this different rad guard, but I don't believe that should be a major issue. All right, let's start this experiment. Wow, is it holding at 155? really be something if the fan didn't come on because it never got up hot enough to cycle This stuff is supposed to be pretty good. It seems to be holding at 155. If it can just stay there, the fan won't come on. But this could idle indefinitely. That would blow my mind. Oh, there it is. All right. It finally did come on, and then it's off again. It was only on very briefly, and this went from 157 down to 39, 155. There the fan's on again. video to really figure out what's going on here because it seems like I mean I'll have to see at what, how many if it was over 11 minutes or under 11 minutes when the fan initially kicked in but it seems to me like the fan isn't staying on as long when it does come on and the cooling effect like it's dropping 20 degrees so there could be a difference here but I'm not sure 